Hi there. Uh, let's look at a couple of design improvements that we have been done since last year. By the way, my name is Pedro Silva and I'm the lead UX designer and a community manager at Collabor Productivity. So let's start with enabling additional triggers. So we have noticed that depending on the device that the user has been, that has been using, you might need additional buttons or slightly different approaches on a couple of workflows. Case in point, when using a tablet, in this case, uh, let's say an iPad, user might need, actually really need, uh, to go back to the read mode. Yeah, maybe we start, as you can see on the left, with the read-only mode. The user proceeds editing maybe a couple, a couple of, um, adjustments and then wants to go back with one tab to the read-only mode not only because it gives more space to read as you can see on the right side but these little tweaks and adjustments is what we have been trying to do across the board so this in this case we have a tablet we have other things planned on for mobile but also within these modes when working on the desktop I, uh, I guess i don't have that much time so i'm trying let's uh, speed up a bit so uh, a couple of improvements were done left and right on drop downs these uh, pop-ups for instance we have here on the left the pop-up that you can uh, see on when using spreadsheets these things were refined in terms of design but in terms but also in terms of functionality and while doing that decreasing the amount of code that we are you know that we have and the uh, uh, the code that we generate uh, when you look at the front end uh, side in the browser there is also mentions so this is uh, you already all listen about this uh, we already an announced this is joint uh, effort um, uh, with uh, nextcloud a lot of work from uh, and thanks to rachel raul julius um, jan shimon so this is great uh, now uh, you are able to mention a, a user and that you and this is within the the document uh, but uh, of course we plan to improve and uh, possibly to extend uh, this feature then uh, on to the all the work we did uh, around references so we really try to revamp all these references to make it uh, very powerful for uh, you know either be that students or PhD students, uh, scientists, everyone that depends heavily on citations and citation system. So we have revamped um, that. And uh, we we have a, a couple of uh, additional features, both uh, visible both on the compact mode and on the tapped uh, mode. And that I, do, I will not talk so much because uh, I think Pranam has a specific talk that you cannot miss um, uh, related to the references and the in integration that we did uh, with Zotero, which means that right now um, user can access his own Zotero library. No need to have any uh, plugin installed in the browser, no extension, not even the, any desktop application. Uh, and you can just access uh, your own Zotero library or, and let's imagine, people work in group, they collaborate. So it's amazing that since we are relying on uh, user Zotero, Zotero's API key, they can, when they try to access one of these features by clicking the button, they will, see, they will, they will be prompted with this uh, dialog, they can insert their API key, and they can also have access to any shared group library that they might have on uh, Zotero site. But again, don't miss uh, Pranam's uh, talk. On to more dialogues. So you can see that there is a 
pattern here. We have been trying to make it more consistent, converting more dialogues left and right. Again, don't miss another very great talk on this from Shimon. But we also, while doing that, uh, we try to tweak and improve uh, the design. So the example find and replace dialogue, we try to make it easier um, to not only work with it, but fix any alignments, make it simple. Um, and hyperlink dialogue, it's another one that we improved. And with that, even behaviors of those dialogues, for example, we you cannot anymore <laughs> insert ghost links this kind of empty hyperlinks that it was possible in the past and other behaviors that now we account for and we have a fail safe a, a fallback uh, solution for that currently you know already merged and already released of course formula bar improvements yes yeah, so uh, with formula bar being now uh, native and what i mean by this so it comes directly from our JavaScript that generates um, this uh, code, H, uh, the HTML uh, that you see, and all the behavior, of course. There is a lot of improvements that were needed, again, behavioral, but also design-wise. Um, and uh, not only on desktop view, but also on uh, mobile. So there was a couple of uh, elements being cropped, being outside uh, on slightly too small mobile devices or some, or even too big where it would um, affect alignment. So all these were make it, uh, you know, more crispy, more like the, even the sizes that we use for those icons, but the behavior of expanding, uh, collapsing, make sure that everything is within the user's uh, view. Here we have another, ex another example of a great improvement. Yes, and if you are wondering uh, why we have those cute emojis, yeah, this is not, this is not fake, this is not a mock-up, no, this is really a, a screenshot. So uh, if you want to know more about this, don't miss the great talk from Miklos. Uh, about uh, content controls and yeah this is just normal form controls that you can just operate on that and it of course it accepts uh, emoji characters but again back to the pattern i was uh, mentioning we try to improve all these uh, drop downs uh, make it uh, better aligned you know and even uh, we have uh, funny uh, bugs that would only affect users with either with high DPI or uh, even if they don't have high DPI, but they have slightly different browser zoom and do the fact these uh, drop downs, these elements. So we fix that and make sure that everything is, again, <laughs> uh, you know, very crispy, clear, not blurry. And with that in mind, trying to make it everything easier to grasp at first sight, we also trying to increase uh, color contrast and visibility in many areas. So again, Calx drop down is one example. Uh, not only the drop down itself, and also the additional um, states that we have added, be that mouse over click, but all but uh, the respective model the respective uh, pop-up that appears when triggered. Yeah, so, and uh, I'm not sure if I have that much time, but um, dialogues, as you can see, it's a, it's a topic, it's a theme that we have been uh, invested a, a lot of time trying to make everything quasi uh, consistent. So with that, uh, thanks for all the hard work from uh, Shimon and Gokai from converting these dialogues left and right. But Next up, we couldn't forget that it's not just about converting, but it's also, the, and they look visually consistent, but they need to be meaningful, meaning that they cannot look the same if they do have a different behavior. Yeah, again, before we have these, um, the same dialogues looking the same, but one user could interact with the background and another one user couldn't interact with background. 
so it was um, it was important and you can access this information in call.la forward slash dialogues it was important to categorize to make clear for everyone part of this discussion and, and um, collaborative uh, improvement uh, what is what <laughs> You know what? Uh, which differences uh, we can have visually? What is a, a light box and what is a non-light box? And then, in our code, uh, even what is a dialog and what is not a dialog? Example: We have a lot of non-dialog components that they might share the same code. They might be generated within the same place, but they actually are this, as you can see, this kind of uh, drop down, these contextual options. And they have slightly different behavior, right? So, um, you know, for instance, clicking outside should close the widget. Uh, and there is other things, for instance, uh, tabbing, going through uh, the, um, the elements should be should be cyclical so you could very easily going from first option to the last option and not by mistake closing the 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 this contextual menu just because you went very quickly and you press again the key tab so all the things we have been trying to account for and what is modular and what is non module yeah right so and you can see all these informations there in the forum. I try to make it clear. And it's great that we start slowly but steady getting more of not only converted, but uh, consistent visually and in terms of behavior. And user now knows what to expect, what it what it closes, uh, and, and when it's possible to interact with background or not. That's it. Thank you for your time. Have a cool, cool days. <laughs>